Now let's look at some examples where we can use the comparison test. First, consider the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus 1. <clears throat> As it turns out, we could actually use the integral test on this one, but let's try to practice the comparison test. Once I decide that I want to try and use the comparison test, my goal is to try to come up with another series that very much looks like the one that I have, but that the comparison series is much easier to determine whether or not it converges or diverges. In general, much of the time, my instinct is to use the comparison test when I have a series that almost looks like a P-series or almost looks like a geometric series. So if you look at this one, this one almost looks like a P-series. And what I mean by that is I can see the terms of a P-series in here. This is not a P-series, though, because of that plus 1 in the denominator. So when I see that this almost looks like a P-series, the P-series that I see in there is exactly what I want to compare it to. So here, what I'm going to note is that the if I try to think of the relationship here, so this is the series of interest, and it almost looks like this series. Then we need to decide what the relationship is here. So notice that the denominator, k squared plus 1, is larger than the denominator k squared. Consequently, each term on the left is going to be bounded above by each term on the right, and therefore the series on the left is bounded above by the one on the right. So I have that my series is bounded above by the p series, where p is equal to 2. So this series on the right here, it's worth noting, converges. And we can quickly justify that by noting that it's a p series where p, which is 2, is greater than 1. So again, that is my justification for the fact that the series I'm bringing into this converges. Now, that tells me that the series I started with converges. And again, I want to make sure that I can clearly state what I'm using as a test for this. So this converges by the comparison test. So this would be a complete solution of that. Suppose we have another example where I'm looking at the sum now from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k plus k. What I'd like to point out about this one is that there are actually two familiar series in here. In some sense, this almost looks like a p series, and it almost looks like a geometric series. So let's look at those in turn. So there's this p-series at the same time as this geometric series. So that really leads me to think of two possible comparisons to make. So let's just look at both of those and think about what the useful direction would be. So starting, oops, let me color coordinate this. Starting with noticing the 1 over k, what we can think of is let's take our series and try and compare it to the p-series, 1 over k. Again, what I want to focus on here is that these denominators are different. In particular, the denominator of what we have on the left is larger than that on the right, and consequently, the entire sum is smaller. And likewise, if we wanted to compare our series to the other thing I see in there, that is the sum of 1 over 2 to the k. Same thing happens. The denominator on the left is larger, so this also provides now an upper bound on the original series. So we have two potential series to compare this to. Now let's think about what we know about these series. Going back to 1 over k, this series diverges. And again, our justification is that it's a p-series where p is 1. And we know that um, a p-series diverges for p-values that are less than or equal to 1. This series in blue 
let's just write it in another way. Notice that this is the same thing as the sum of one half to the k, which is making it a little bit more explicit that it is a geometric series. So this series converges. And again, my quick justification for that is that it's geometric. And recall that once I have a geometric series, I look at the absolute value of r, which in this case is 1 half. And that needs to be strictly less than 1. So I have two comparisons that I can make here. But I'll note that only the blue comparison is useful, if you think back to the comparison test. In red, we've bounded our series above by one that's known to diverge, which really tells us nothing. But in blue, we've bounded it above by a series that converges. So really, my useful work, I'll kind of point out, it's not wrong to have what's in red, it's just not useful. So it's this one that's useful. And I'm going to say that because of this, what we've written in blue, this is enough for me to say that my original series converges. And again, I want to reference the comparison test. So when using the comparison test, not only do you want to have that reference to the test itself, but you want to provide some background work. And that's what I have in blue here. And another example, we can consider the sum from 1 to infinity of k plus 1 over k squared. Again, there are really kind of two possibilities that you could see here. 1 over k squared and k over k squared. So those are the two things that kind of jump out at me. So when I'm looking at this, like above, I could really look at these two in turn. So take my series and try and compare it to that of 1 over k squared. So here, we're actually comparing the numerators, which are different. The one on the left has a larger numerator. And so in this case, we can say the one on the left is larger. And so I have here the series, which is has terms 1 over k squared. This converges. And again, why? That's because it's a p series, where our value of p, which is 2, is strictly greater than 1. So this comparison gives us a lower bound, which converges. And recall that that is inconclusive then with regard to our original series. But we can come back to the original series, and let's prepare, uh, compare it to the one I circled in blue, k over k squared. Again, I'm comparing the numerators. So our numerator of k plus 1 is, of course, larger than that of k. So the inequality goes in the same direction. However, this series is the same thing as the sum of 1 over k, right? I can simplify that. And this diverges. It's a p series where p is equal to 1. So in this instance, Again, we have that my second line is what gives me my useful information. And consequently, when I want to give my final answer here, um, it's really this that allows me to say that the original series diverges by the comparison test. And to be clear with these examples where I'm going through kind of the red and the blue, the work I've shown in red here is certainly not necessary. I just wanted to point out the thought process. If you look at this and you can deduce that only one of these comparisons is going to be useful, then you should go right ahead to the useful comparison. But as you're starting to get used to this, you might find that you pick something and then realize it's not a useful comparison. That's okay. Go back and try something else if you do think the comparison test is what is useful here. And what I'd like to leave off here that will kind of segue into our next video is we just looked at this series and we were able to show that um, it diverges by the comparison test. In general, I'll point out that um, when the terms, so when a sub k is essentially a rational function in k, so a polynomial in k divided by 
a polynomial in K. Then in that instance, what typically is a good idea, so often I'll say that that does lead to a nice comparison test situation, obviously, um, often, and that is because within that term, you can likely see some different p-series, much like we did in this last example. So for comparison, choose the highest exponent and top and bottom. So what I mean there, if we look back at this example, of course, there was only one choice in the bottom, k squared. But in the top, I had k or I had 1. And we noticed that it ended up being when we chose k in the numerator that we got the more useful comparison. So that k, that's k to the first power versus 1 is k to the zeroth power. In general, your useful comparison is going to be when you pick out the highest exponent in the numerator and divide it by the highest exponent in the denominator. So that's just kind of a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. And finally, what about the series that I'm just going to tweak? So looking at the one at the top of the page here, what if instead you were asked to consider k minus 1 over k squared? So certainly by the kind of general statement or the rule of thumb I have here, again, we would we would plan to compare this to the same series we used in the last example. And that was the harmonic series, 1 over k. But in this case, that's going to give us an upper bound. So we know that this series is bounded above by the sum of 1 over k. But this gives us no information having an upper bound that diverges. But you could also find that comparing it to anything else is not going to be useful. So in this instance, we'll think that the comparison test doesn't seem to give us a useful result. And it turns out that it's in situations like this where you naturally would bound your sum above by a series that diverges or below by a series that converges, that we would use what's called the limit comparison test. And I'll go into that in our next video.